What's going on everyone? Welcome back to 2GZ Garage. Today we have a very exciting video. If you guys do not know, one of the biggest problems that I have with Tina is the braking. My turbo housing and the downpipe is right next to the brake booster. If you see, I have this shield already, but the shield is not enough. It keeps heating this up tremendously and my brakes get very spongy. So, I called up Chase Bays, gave them my brake pedal ratio and the bolt pattern of my brake booster. They were able to pair me up with a brake booster kit that they actually sell. If you guys have a Toyota pickup and you want to do this as well, just follow my steps and I'll show you guys how to do it. We also got the adjuster valve so we can adjust the brake pressure in the front to the rear. So we can go from 30% or 60%. You can see you have there less to rear. This is a very good piece to the puzzle. So here it is. This connects to the pedal on the inside of the truck. I have to adjust it to the correct size. Um, this kit is made for Toyota Supra. It should work on the truck as well. This is an upgrade that should help the truck a tremendous amount. Like. I need brakes like bad. Um, after I do this upgrade, I will also be doing the drums to disc conversion in the rear and that should also help tremendously. I'll show you guys a quick video of what is around on the stock one. I'll show you guys the bay. If you guys notice, my turbo is actually off. Um, I have a little issues with that as well. That will all come more later. Um, I would not be running the turbo size that I was running before. You can see the stock brake booster, how close it is to the downpipe. The downpipe, it should in reality, it should sit right about there. You can see it's pretty close. Before we do anything, we have to drain the fluid out of the stock one. So I'm just gonna pop one of these lines loose. I get a little container down there, let it all leak out. Then I can start unbolting stuff. What's gonna be the hardest part of this upgrade is doing the brake lines. I have to get some custom braided stainless steel flexible lines so I can run it to the front brakes and then one going to the rear brake line. I have to put the Chase Bay's master cylinder on and then I have to take measurements and see the length of the hose I need. Try to find somebody that can make me that length of hose. So here's the little container with my old brake fluid. You can see it was pretty dirty. Now that this is drained, I can disconnect all the lines going to it. Now that I got these two lines off, I did look and it just connects to the bottom. I don't have to take the two in the bottom off. It's not like connected to the cylinder. So I could take this out separate. Now I gotta take out what looks like to be 12 millimeter bolts. There's four of them, two on this side and two on this side and then I should be able to slide this right out. If you guys wanted shield to uh, protect your brake booster from the downpipe, hit me up. Made for a 22RE Toyota pickup. There you go. Here it is. Uh, forgot to unplug it. Just gotta unplug that sensor. This cylinder is junk. It's actually the original one from 1994, so it is actually a very good thing that I'm doing this upgrade now. Um, it was either getting a new master cylinder or just doing the upgrade. I was like, if I can do an upgrade, I'm gonna do it. So now we gotta go to the inside so we can take off the brake booster. We wanna come here to the bottom. Let me get the carpet out the way. If you guys see those four bolts and the clip that's on the top, we have to remove that pin, slide that piece out, and then unbolt them. And then that whole brake booster should slide right out. Before we unbolt them, we're gonna take out that clip to slide out the pin and then unbolt those four bolts. All right, so after removing that pin and clip, you can see the brake pedal is gonna be all loose. And now that we got that loose, I can show you guys those four bolts. We need to take them out so we can slide out the brake booster. I got that line off. I'm gonna try to do this one-handed so I can show you guys how to slide it right out. But just pull it out. I might not be able to do it one-handed. All right, so as you can see, I got it removed. You can see my paint in the back is not painted match, so I'm gonna have to get it painted, but I'm not too worried about that right now. So you can see I have the brake booster right here, and if I put that side to side next to what we're putting in, that is a huge difference. It's, it's about the same size, actually it's shorter than just the cylinder itself. So what I'm gonna do to try and speed up the process and help myself out, I have to adjust this arm, the lever that connects to the brake pedal, so I'm gonna like take measurements of how far this is to the pin over here and try to get the same measurement on this one. So I measured and adjusted this thing to the best that I can. I still may need to adjust it once I get it on the truck, but uh, you can see I had to take off the little spacers that they included because um, the truck is a little bit shorter. Let's try to slide this in. Moment of truth, see if the bolt pattern is right. Uh-oh, be a little tight. Something, something's hitting. All right, so I tried to put it in. I loosened up the studs, see if it'll give it enough wiggle room to slide right in. It's just not enough space. 
So I have to drill those holes out just the hair. All right, I drilled the holes out just a little bit and it slid all the way in. The bolts, everything is all nice and tightened up. Everything is nice, the new hardware is super nice, very strong metal. I was able to torque those bolts down pretty good. You wanna make sure you tighten those things pretty good, that way they don't come loose. All right, so I ran into something that I'm going to have to modify with the kit. The piece that connects to the brake pedal where the pin slides into is not big enough. I do need to use my factory pin because it has that slot for the spring to pull the pedal back up. And if you look at the one that came with the kit, it does not have that and it's much smaller. So the pedal like has a lot of play if I use a small pin. So what I have to do is drill out this hole, that way I can fit the original pin in and then we should be good. All right, so here at the workbench, you can see I drilled it out and it gave me just enough room to slide the stock pin right in and we should be good. All right, so I slid the pin in and I adjusted the pedal to the proper length and the way that you know that it's at the proper length, you wanna have just a little bit of play. You see I have a little bit of play for the pedal. Um, you don't want it to be tight all the time because then your brakes are always gonna be activated. It's gonna wear out your brakes faster and stuff. All right, so now if you guys take a look, you can see it's all nice and in there. Got the pin on and the spring. So now it goes in and retracts just like factory. So we should be good with that. Now that we're back in the bay, I can show you guys everything, how it looks, nice and sweet. So much space already. I'm ready to install the pressure valve. So what I have to do is take off the bolt from the bottom holding in the cylinder. This is gonna go right here in the bottom. And yeah, that's how it's gonna look. I got the control valve installed, everything nice and tightened up. I just have to tighten up the top bolt holding on the cylinder. Make sure you guys tighten up these bolts because they do come loose. Now I can take my measurements for the length of the lines I'm going to need. It's a little late night. I have everything on my phone. So what's going to suck is we have two different fittings and sizes of the lines. So here's the lengths. The line going to the rear brakes is gonna be a four and a half feet female to female, one's gonna be to the truck um, fitting and the other one's gonna be to the chase base. The second one's gonna be the two feet male. That's gonna go to the left front wheel. I'm gonna do it in a 45 degrees male going to the chase base, straight going to the bottom. The last one, the third one we're gonna need is a four and a half foot as well. That's for the right front brake and that's gonna be a straight male fitting going to the truck fitting and the female straight going to the chase bay's cylinder. Now I know that all might sound pretty confusing, but once I get the lines made, I can show you guys exactly what I mean. And I did add a little bit of extra length, so that way I can have a little slack so I'm not stressing the line out once I put them in. So what I did to measure it is I got a rope. I just ran a rope through where I'm going to run the brake lines. And I basically just measured the rope. I make sure I kept my hand there, pulled it all out, measured the rope, the length, and that's how I got my links. See just how Tina looks now? So naked, there's nothing there. No turbo, no manifold, no brake booster. But you get access to the block. I did have a few oil leaks down here that now it's gonna be a lot easier to take care of. So before I put any of that back on, I will take care of that. I'm also gonna be redoing my oil return line. But that'll be once everything is on and in. Finally, this thing's off. You can see my eBay wastegate. That is going to be going. We do have a Turbo Smart wastegate for this thing. So that's gonna be another big upgrade. Hopefully I take care of this truck by the end of this week with the brake system. I wanna get that stuff over with. And after that, maybe I'll do the rear brake disc conversion. That's gonna be a huge upgrade. But what I'm thinking to do is do this brake booster and I'll drive the truck for a while and then I'll do the rear disc conversion so that way I can see the difference in them. That sounds like a plan. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, welcome back. It's the next day. I have already made my way to Royal Brass and Hose. If you guys are in the area, you should come and check these people out. They actually are making my hose right now as I speak. I don't know the price of them yet. I will tell you guys the price and what I'm gonna spend on the braided line. I did get stainless steel flexible braided line, so it's gonna be a little costly. And I got some nice black black on black fittings. That way they match the Chase Bay's uh, AN fittings as well. All right, so if you guys look here, you can see I got the brake lines done. Here's the two for the one for the driver's side front brake. 
I accidentally told the guy mistakenly I needed it in a 45 when I actually need it in a 90 but it actually turns out he didn't even have a 90 so I'm gonna have to try to make this 45 work but I do believe that I will be okay because I did leave a little extra slack to get those lines done um, when everything was all said and done I did end up spending right at $234 now you might be saying that is a lot but that is actually a pretty good price considering that I got 11 feet of hose and if you really think about it if you look up online it costs like almost a hundred bucks just for two foot hose if you try to get it anywhere else so I think I got it for a pretty good price again I came here to Royal Brass and Hose here in Orlando and they were able to hook me up with this I was not able to get it done anywhere else so thankfully they were able to do it I did have to drive quite a while though to come over here and get them done but now that I have them I'm excited I'm gonna put these on the truck and test fit them and if they work i'll tell you guys the size the specs everything about these hoses so you guys can get them for your truck as well all right so here we are in the bay i already installed the driver's side front brake line it goes down to the bottom it was very easy there's the new line going straight down to it if you look at the old one the stock one they have a bunch of spirals on them you probably think that's a mess but actually the purpose of those spirals was for the body roll because the chassis has a little flex. Whenever it flexes, like this is what kept the lines from snapping, so. I did leave a lot of extra line, that way you can have that slack just like the stock ones. Now I'm getting ready to install the other two hoses, the one going to the rear lines and the one going to the front passenger side. One thing I do suggest is when you guys get these fittings, to get that in a 90, not a 45. What I also did is remove the brackets holding on the brake lines. I'm getting ready to remove the, the stock brake lines. So I've been working these lines off. Um, I had to pop them all off the clips. There's three of them. There's one here, one in the middle, and a fourth one down there in the bottom, which connects the two lines together. I've been trying to figure out what's the easiest way to take this line out whole, but it seems like I'm, I am gonna have to cut it. Um, I might cut it right here. That way I can slide the bottom one out and the top one out. As you see, I got these over here pretty close to out, but they just need to slide off now. So I had to end up cutting them, wasn't able to use the cutters, so just get yourself a fine blade, a little sawzall, it'll fit perfectly. Alright, so after fighting with it for a little bit, fighting with Yondo, we were able to get the lines out in four different pieces. I've been spending a lot of time running the lines and all my wiring, I've been trying to make everything look nice and clean, using zip ties to keep the hoses together. Um, I'm using the stock mounting brackets. I had to do some slight modifications and cut them out a little bit to slide the hoses in there because the steel line and the new braided line are different sizes. The braided line is much thicker than the steel line as you see so I had to cut out the plastic so they can fit in there. Um, but yeah, I've just been spending a lot of time. As you can see, the engine bay is looking way cleaner on the firewall. On this side, obviously, you can see more of the wires and hoses. Probably put some wire loom over top of that so it just looks like one black hose going this way or something you can already see the huge difference in the way this thing is going to make the engine bay look it's going to look so much more smooth and crisp if you do buy the kit together with the valve it's going to have this fitting on the bottom you have one left one right and then you have the one coming out of the cylinder so you have three total ports one of those ports is going to go to the driver's side front the other port's going to go to the passenger side front and the last one's going to go to the rear so the way you know which side goes to which is you basically look at looking at it from this way towards the firewall whichever one's on the right side goes to that side front whichever one's on the left side goes to this side front as well the one that's by itself is the one that goes to the rear and the rear wires off or it tees off in the back somewhere and depending on your car your your make model but that's how it works on my truck but yeah that's basically how it works this allows you to adjust how much braking force you have in the rear pretty nice to have that valve i suggest you guys get that valve it makes running the lines a lot easier it makes it look super nice as you can see on the firewall it looks so clean all right so i have been tackling the truck for quite a while now and this is where i'm going to end this video this is what i ended up with I wire tucked all these wires in here going over top of the reservoir. My vacuum lines, everything looking nice and clean. I tried to make it look as clean as possible. And as you guys can see, it looks sick. I tightened up all the brake lines, ran the brake lines all the way through. Down here, as you guys can see, I got the brake lines nice and connected. 
this is the one going to the front brakes and this is the line going to the rear brakes um, I put it behind this one behind the bar that way it'll hide so no one can come up to my truck and cut my brake lines God forbid that ever happens but you never know this is where I'm going to end off today's video because this video is gonna end up being super long so I'm gonna have to do it in two parts so the next video I'm gonna bleed all the brake lines and everything and then I'll show you guys the ending results and how the pedal feels how everything feels so Stay tuned for the next part two video. I hope you guys enjoy this little series, this upgrade that I'm doing to Tina. It is one of the biggest upgrades that I am doing. Super excited. I hope you guys are as well. I hope to see you guys in part two. Peace.